This episode of the Cultural Cast is sponsored by Coffee on the Line in Ashton Indoor Market Hall. Great freshly roasted coffee for low prices. Grab a quick latte for only £1.30 or why not take some coffee home with you? 200 grams for only £4 and choose from the wide range of great tasting coffees. Try something flavoured, £1.60 for a latte. All fresh and all fantastic. That's Coffee Underline in Ashton Underline. Well, hello and welcome to episode 45 of the Cottrell Cast. <laughs> and good afternoon. And yeah. it's good afternoon because we're recording this differently uh, because Michael's not here. Again, well, mainly because we're just being awkward and we decided to record it at a different time to when we normally do so Michael couldn't make it. So mostly our fault that Michael isn't here, but uh, let's blame Michael anyway. But Michael, I don't like you. Michael's Michael after all, isn't he? So um, we've no footage again this week because a very, very... Oh, oh, okay, go. He's going. Gareth Hill, <laughs> um, he, he had a... Well, well, we'll talk about the main reason why I think you're ill later. Right. Uh, but yeah, go, go on, Gareth. Well, go, 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 carry on. I'm not so well, I'll be honest with you. Um, thankfully, I'm usually fairly fit and healthy, but when I do get ill, it seems to linger for a heck of a long time. And that's where we are now, where I was a bit ill on Thursday and it got worse and worse and worse. And then something happened on Saturday, which made it a lot worse. And here I am now feeling a bit sicky and a bit coughy headache, dizzy, but you know me, always the fighter. Always the fighter. He's a real trooper. He really is. Uh, so we, um, on Saturday, Gareth had the first gig with his, with his band. Yeah. Didn't you, eh? What Cottrell they called? the Cottrellite. Mind, mind the step. Sorry. Mind no, the gap. Oh. Mind the gap. Mind uh, the gap. Gareth the had band. his, uh, Gareth had his first gig. Me and Michael went along, sat at the front. How uh, was it? It was all right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you had, uh, you had, you developed a little fan girl at the front. Oh, wow. That which was, was the weirdest experience ever. So throughout Gareth's gig, there was this woman, which we're not sure whether she worked for the pub or, or whether was just she was just helping out and being nice. Yeah, but she kept on picking up everyone's glasses. Now, I mean, there's glass collecting. And then there's glass collecting. I mean, she was on form. Literally, it's like she could smell the finished glasses. And it was like the instant that you'd finished your drink, she was on it. She was literally, she was there. Where in fact, at one point, she saw that I had a little tiny bit left in my glass. And, and she, she was hovering, waited. She? she was hovering and she waited for me to finish it. The instant that I'd finished it, she took the glass and was like, okay, bye, 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 bye. And then that was that. Yeah, and then, uh, and then on the final song, which was a little bit of a lovey number... Uh, she was Sorry. watching Gareth intently. Yeah, because it was awkward because the song was um, Andy Williams, Can't Take My Eyes Off You. Oh, and she really could and not take her eyes off she couldn't take her you. eyes off me. So I decided that I would go along with it and I winked at her. Nice. Probably not she, best to encourage her, really. She she almost went in for a hug. Whilst oh, no. I was I was I was I was in mid flow and I had to awkwardly just back off. Yeah, ba- back away, you freak! Get so, it, get off me. Yes, um, photographs are available, by the way, of the performance on the Mind the Gap Facebook page. Go yeah. and have a look at that. But I'm suffering because it was it was bad as it was, and then having to sing. There was about 25 songs. Gareth's voice was already going basically. That we did. So I I think it was too many. I was saying this to Mum when I came back. I think it was too many. I think you should have done two sets and called it a day. So do I. I think everyone, but I I don't know. I just think it went on a bit too long, and there was there was too much of a yeah. gap in between. But each performance, you should have really done two and just split them up for longer. Problem was was um, he said that we have to be on 9.30 till 12.30. And basically, it was that thing of, look, as long as you're doing something in that time, we don't mind. Now, originally, there was only two sets. And then they began messing with it and say, oh, well, um, last week I was there and the band did three sets. So let's do three. And I was thinking, well, no, let's just do two, but have a longer gap in between them both. I'm not sure, but... Uh, well, there we go. I think that it was too many. Uh, although, what one other thing that happened? Uh, more importantly, I drove us there. 
Oh, dear Lord. So I have insurance on Gareth's car now, which must be terrifying for him. Uh, but that means that I can drive now as long as I have someone who has a license in the car with me. I'm taking my test on the 20, 21st of May, I think. And and so I'm getting some practice in. And so I drove me and Gareth to the gig. Gareth had a little escort. It was all right, really? Yeah, I was driving us right. I drove us home. We were cruising, listening to dance music on our uh, yeah. on Radio 1. It was pretty mental, I have to say. It was odd because many, many years ago, I remember carrying you out of the hospital in a blanket that I'd knitted for you and then being in the front seat whilst you're driving. It was a very, very odd experience. But it's quite exciting. I think, I mean, believe it or not, I'm no driving instructor or examiner. Hard to believe, I know. Yeah, I know. Because I have the hair, I have the tweed jacket. Yeah. Uh, but... I imagine that if you don't pass this time, you will pass the second time. Hopefully. I'm that a, is my prediction. I do I do want to pass the first time, though. I guess it's the whole kind of, oh, yeah, I pass first time. So that's why I'm trying to get as much practice as I can. I mean, the thing is, is it's so awkward, you know. Like, I was talking to my instructor, and there's, like, certain things that, like, you know, if you slip on a little bit, you've just failed instantly. Hmm. You know, I, and, and, and also, did you know this, that if you have to perform an emergency stop on your test, like someone walks to the middle of the road, they pass you on the spot. So I'm thinking, well, why don't I set up a little ploy on the route somewhere? Why don't I get, you know, like you to jump out in front of the car? Because I'll no slam on the look, emergency brakes. You'll forget to stop. That's true. And actually, I'll die. And I'll kill you. Yeah. Probably not the best way. I though. remember, I mean... I've been driving for 37 years now. Oh, and um, Michael's been driving for 100, actually. <laughs> in fact, Michael... Michael um, developed the wheel. ...passed his um, test, actually, uh, horse and carriage. Well, well, I, I heard it, it wasn't even that. I heard that it was much like the Flintstones. It, yeah. it, it was all feet. It was. You used to run and carry the whole thing on your shoulders. That's what I heard. I don't know whether that's true. Um, and I passed the third time. Now, I admit that the first time I wasn't very good. I wasn't ready to pass. But the second and third, I had the same instructor. And the second time, he took me on one of the busiest junctions and yeah. roundabouts in the north, which well, is, um, in fact, guess. The Stockport. The Stockport one, Stockport exactly. Stockport roundabout. So there's about 20 different turnoffs. And even now, okay, I, I don't, don't think know they which do that lane anymore. to be in. I don't think they do that anymore, you know. Well, so second time he took me on that and I completely messed it up. And then the third time I got it spot on and since I've never got it right. Yeah, I, it, it is just, uh, it is, I think, I think that it is mostly luck depending on who you get. But also there is just loads of like little tiny things which if you mess it up, you've just failed. And, it, you know, and no matter how much of a good driver you might be, if you fail on that one little thing... You know, then you kind of, you know, you kind of buggered. But I don't know. Hopefully, I'll pass first. It will be brilliant if I do. I have to say, I'll be very pleased. Uh, although, I mean, I think it has a lot to do with your age as well. Apparently, if you are older, if you take your test when you're older, you are more likely to pass first time because people I remember, are 17 I so and nervous. 18 are, you know, like this is all new to them and stuff. You know, whereas people, you know, which are older. And do you do you see better with contact lenses in our glasses? Contact lenses. By far. Right. Because realistically, right, I should have failed the third time. Because he couldn't see. Because. He was blind. He, he, well, it was the first time I decided um, I'd, I'd be okay wearing glasses. Oh, now, no. problem is that um, I hadn't had an eye test in about a year and a half at the time. And my contact lenses were the right ones I was meant to have, and the glasses weren't. And the first thing they do, they will ask you to read a number plate at a certain distance. Yeah. Whether or not, or whether or not they still do that, I don't know. Yeah, they do because I did that on my first uh, right. lesson. And yeah. I remember he he asked me, and for the life of me, I was straining and I couldn't make it out. And he went right, let and he was. Um in an eye and what should we do? And he says, Right, just move a little <laughs> bit further and I did and it was fine. Well, I yeah, I see way better with my contacts on. I think also because your peripheral vision is there as well. I think that right. you know, like I I did a lesson in my glasses and I find it much harder to see because I can't when I turn my head, I have to properly turn my head, whereas with contacts you don't. You I just... always find as well that um if I'm ever on air and if um, I wear glasses, because the headphone 
yeah, arm oh, well goes annoyed, in between the headphone and your face. Yeah. It leaves a gap, which always causes feedback on the microphone. Yeah, it, and, and and but also the bad thing about wearing contacts in our radio station is the lights are the worst thing ever because I I always have to turn them off when I go in because <laughs> it just excuse me it's just dreadful it, it it for some reason those lights just give you dreadful headaches if you have contact lenses everyone that wears contact lenses says the same thing that for some reason it just gives just gives everyone a dreadful headache and I'm not quite sure why oh there we go look Gareth's uh, yeah I'm, Gareth's live on on Periscope I'm now again. Live. On He's Periscope always live here, on Periscope. Doing it here. And um, I've now got 100 and odd followers, which um, I am quite proud of, really. Yeah. How many have you got? Uh, what, followers? Oh, I don't know. I haven't even been on it. By the way, let's talk about my little viral video, which is going pretty crazy at the moment. So um, you might have heard this thing where apparently you can enhance your lips by sucking into a shot oh, glass. this was funny. I heard about this on Friday night and I was watching some of them and they were absolutely hilarious and I thought, well, why not I give it a go? There was no males doing it, so I thought, all right, I'll give it a go. Me and Gareth filmed it on, was it Saturday? No, it wasn't. No, we, 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 we filmed it on Friday. We filmed it on Friday. I found the stuff on Thursday, yeah. So we, we filmed it on Friday, uploaded it on Saturday and it's sad at the moment. Uh, about 4,500 views, which is pretty crazy. I'm quite impressed with that. And, and basically, my lips go massive on it. So if you want to see that, it's on my YouTube channel. Just search Sour Fraser. Uh, and you can see my lips go massive. And they're still... And they went blue afterwards because it, it cuts off the circulation in your lips. Um, and they're all cut and all chat. It is horrible. My lips are an absolute mess after that. And they're still a little bit blue now. Um, well... I don't often say this, but um, one of my videos went semi-viral. Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah, it Which did. was a great... It, it was those things... And I think over the years, we have now worked out, haven't we, that there is no oh, straight yeah. answer of how to make something be successful. No way. There really isn't. Yeah. To the point where me and you have invested lots of time getting getting ideas together that we think will yeah. be very funny. We've uploaded them and they've been watched by about six people. Yeah. Whereas um, I was up early and something happened on BBC Breakfast and basically it was a newsreader going to a reporter who was out and about. Had a bit of a strop, didn't she? And the sound failed and she didn't realise it had failed and carried on, and then obviously somebody behind the camera told her that it had failed, and then she went off on a strop. All she like dropped the microphone and was like, yeah. oh, <laughs> all together, like went it went on for about thirty seconds, if that. So I just got my phone um, and rewinded it, rewinded it, 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 it yeah, rewound it, and That's then the um, uploaded it to YouTube. I thought nobody will watch it. Should, should we have a look how many views? And then. Just out of the blue, something very strange happened where I got to work. So bearing in mind, I checked it about half an hour after uploading it and it had got to 250 views, which alone is rather rare. Well, for that that quick. It was on the Weekend Wireless channel, which, I mean, we don't really update. You never really put much content on there. And suddenly it had got all these views. And I remember seeing it actually, and it had about 500 views. And I was like, Wow. And it was That's just weird. Impressive. And then I remember checking it again um, at about 8 a.m. And it was up to like 1,500. And I was like, oh, right, that's good. And then it went just incredibly wild. And it got up to, I remember calling up you and it was up to something like 20,000. Yeah. And, and then it was going up and up and, and then up. The actual woman in it tweeted it out to all her followers. And now at the moment, uh, it's on 81,000. That is absolutely crazy. And we've made no money off it. Well, so Gareth stupidly didn't put adverts on it. I don't know how to. That's Gareth, the problem. Gareth didn't monetize it, which uh, which meant that there was no adverts on it, which was a little bit silly because 81,000 would have made us probably about £100, actually. And they, yes, but... I don't know how. Thankfully, though, we all got these things work. We got adverts on it for the last 20,000, 30,000 views, but which isn't too bad. I haven't got um, adverts on it still. Now, if I play yeah, it. Yeah, because no you don't. Yeah, yeah, because you don't understand how. Gary doesn't understand how monetization on, on any platform works, okay? To stop you from going on your own video and refreshing it every five seconds to be able to make yourself money, 
YouTube stops your IP from being registered, yeah? So as right. soon as your, your, your IP is registered on their servers on that particular video, like, over three times, then it just stops the adverts running on your device. If you play it now, what will happen? Well, if I... And also, it, it, it doesn't always play... It doesn't always play the, right. those so adverts have a look beforehand. Now so if I go your to Mac, YouTube okay. now... There'll there'll be adverts on the side, hundred percent, and there'll also be uh, adverts halfway, uh, like like little pop up ads. All right, that that's like pretty much guaranteed. I'd say now. Right. Okay. Um. Here we go. A one thousand. There you go. Ads there, and then that there is an advert as well. There. See, so there might not be pre roll adverts, but that's maybe because pre roll adverts have already come up on mine once already. Okay. Uh, let's read the comments, actually. Um, Some of them are quite, quite harsh. It would be funny if she said something like, F you, yeah, uh, and then came back as she said it. That would have been funny. That 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 100% would have got more views. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's now up to 81,000, and I think... It has been successful because TV presenters are always portrayed as nice, friendly people. But that may be just for the cameras, as we saw there. She she seems to be a right yeah. prima donna, prima a real donna, prima yeah. donna. I think I no. I, I, actually, Dad said this a really good idea. He said, "Well, why don't why don't if that's getting that many views, why don't people just set." you know, set like news channels because especially 24 hour news channels, there is always mistakes because it's 24 hours a yeah, day. Yeah, of course. Why, why doesn't someone just set recording new BBC News 24 and then troll through it and then look for the mistakes and then film them and put them online, which you could do, but I imagine that would be incredibly time consuming. Well, but you could... You, see, I mean... You could I've... probably make... A killing out of that. To I be have picked up on in the last two weeks two of them. One was that I uploaded, and the other one I haven't yet put up. But it was where clearly, when they aren't being filmed, these two are friends. Yeah. And and oh yeah, one reporter me that, yeah. introduced the other, and then she says, "Ah, thanks, babes." Uh, <laughs> and it was really really strange. But I think because that if. If that's now had 81,000 views, I mean, if you put in BBC fail, it's the second one this in is the funny. world. Okay, all right. So up. one thing which is always an issue with um, uh, with the BBC, like News 24, is that all all the cameras are fully automated. So, so, so there's no one anymore running the cameras. They're all ran from the gallery. Is this the chair one? Well, there's multiple of them um, I've seen this. where the cameras just go on their own, like wander and just kind of like go on a, yeah, look, watch, here it is. It's quite, it isn't a very good recording, although look there, oh, there we go. See ya. How strange. Bye. And the reason for that is just because they're programmed to do certain things at certain times. And if you don't cancel that that programming, oh, okay. then it's just going to do its own thing. So maybe that was programmed in for the morning for it to go and, you know. Uh, you know, but there is loads of them. You know, like uh, like is this one where that where they're not in the chair? I think is it is it this one where they're not there yet? The camp, yeah. There we go. <laughs> uh, walking over here, walking over here, and <laughs> it's just there like funny stuff no like that. There. Yeah, the, but that's all just cars. But by yeah, the stuff. If you is, search uh, BBC fail, mine is the second one in the whole world. The other one is when Susanna Reid tells off her co-presenter. Is it not there now? Yeah, it's there. Is that it's BBC? Still, it's there. Oh, right. There we go. Yeah, um, what a mistake, eh? We're ridiculous. Well, there is... I don't know. I think... Uh, it's a funny one. Yeah, it is. It's a weird one, yeah, really. But, but that's a good idea that my dad said. Just troll through all the stuff, and I imagine there'll be a few mistakes I today. mean, I, I think that was... Um, a hit because basically nobody else picked up on it or even if they did by the time it had gone yeah, you were like, oh it's, yeah, it's, cool. it's gone because if you search all over that it was featured on the metro news website oh, yeah, we saw, yeah, and it was featured that. on that huffington post that's big that huffington and post it what went, do you search to get these open because i haven't actually right you know i just searched search? uh, bbc breakfast 
sulk or strut, I think I, I put in. Hey, another strut. Or BBC breakfast sulk. Uh, uh, anything? Uh, no, no. BBC breakfast sulk. Uh, if B- you put, put that in. Oh, I put silk for some reason. Sulk. There we go. Sulk. Uh, is it on there? I can't. No, I can't. Is that how you spell sulk? Let's have a look. Or is it... S- right, put, put in... BBC Breakfast Steph. S-T-E-P-H. Here we go. And that should be up there. That somewhere. was the woman that did that, by the way. Um, fail. Let's put... No, no, no. Oh, yeah, there we go. Huffington Post. Is there? There it is. And that is my video. Amazing. There. Uh, this was pretty impressive, actually, that. Um, I am impressed by that. Well, actually, I was, you know, this is a, uh, this is pretty immense. So, um, you've heard of the, you've heard of the page. Have I told you about this? Uh, you, the, do you know that page, Uni Lad? Yeah. How they're based in Manchester. Yeah. Now, yeah, well... They, this is all they do. They just trawl through stuff like this, you know. Like, look, loads of people have done it actually. Loads of people have um, have posted this out. No way. Wow. Well, there we go. Look Why at that. Who else has, has posted it out? No, like other, uh, oh, like t- Twitter tweeters, whatever they're called. Wow, blooming heck. No way. That's pretty impressive, actually. And we got Huffington Post. Eh, you've made it, Gareth. Mm. What You've is that anyway? It. Huffington uh, Post. It's like an online newspaper. It is pretty popular actually. I think it gets uh, some massive uh, some massive it. views, I think. Yeah. So that was that. Um But I wonder I mean, realistically, if you could could come up with four of those in a month. No, oh, you can make a killing. It could yeah. become your full time job. Yeah. Couldn't it? I mean if I'd have not failed <laughs> on adding on those those things i could have made a lot of money off that certainly yeah yeah i mean my video i'm quite impressed with that four thousand views does that get adverts on it oh yeah straight away how much will that make you then about four quid probably yeah about four or five quid probably not but i don't know maybe it'll be about ten thousand i don't know probably not but um ten thousand quid well, no, no, it might be about 10,000 uh, 10, hits maybe by the end of the week, maybe. But normally they die down after about a day or two, really. People get bored of them. Um, well, actually, it has. It has, yeah. Well, yours died down after. It was It was funny, actually. You would have thought that all that Huffington Post stuff would have drawn more publicity to it, but it seemed to die down after all that. Mm. So I don't know what went on there. But, um, but I am hopeful that it will be revived because if you look at lots of these big big videos they were done months ago maybe even years ago yeah well it it, it, it it's stuff like that like bbc fail that just get constant you know they just get constant uh you know constant hits because just people are always searching stuff like that you know so um and also on on the topic of videos and cultural cast and stuff we aren't doing too well on the youtube side of stuff which is why we're doing audio today uh and we are thinking uh we are thinking about changing things uh with the cultural cast thinking of some new formats some new exciting stuff to do uh um I, well, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find out how many people listen because <laughs> iTunes, I know that sounds ridiculous. It seems like a, a ridiculously basic thing, but iTunes doesn't provide us with um, uh, analytics to see who and where you all are, the people that listen to this uh, on iTunes, which means that if you are subscribed to the iTunes uh, cultural cast, we don't know. Uh, and so we kind of have to wing it going off how many times it's been downloaded off the web space and stuff like that. So let's try this okay um if you are on if you are listening to us on itunes now and you haven't already go and like our facebook page uh facebook.com forward slash cultural cast all right it's got 125 likes at the moment go and go and give it a like and then just post on our wall to say that you listen on itunes that you subscribe to us on itunes and if you do it at least uh you know at least tells us a little bit that someone is out there and yeah. they are downloading well, I mean, this I, because we are working on getting some kind of numbers together to know that uh, people are listening. But if you could do that for us, that would be massively helpful because at the moment we have no idea. And we do want to carry on doing this, but it is becoming a little bit ridiculous when 13 people watch it because the YouTube views are the only way that we know hmm. how many people are watching it. Hopefully in the coming weeks we will 
maybe be able to see how many people are uh, listening on iTunes and we might just turn the whole video side of stuff into something a little bit extra that we do on special occasions. Yeah. Um, and also we're just working on some other stuff as well. So do better with us. Uh, but yeah, if you do listen and you are subscribed to us on iTunes, then be sure to drop us uh, a little wall post on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Cottrell cast. Uh, and yeah, or tweet us, whatever you want to do, tell us that you are subscribed and you are listening to us because it would be much appreciated. Yeah, it really would. Uh, and also, if anybody does know how to get um, yeah. iTunes help analytics, please blooming help us out because it is the hardest thing on the face of this earth. Apparently, I, I honestly thought I have no it idea. Would, it, it would be this control panel, yeah, which you'd log into, or when when we upload it, there would be some sort of tab on there you would hit, and it would say how many people, because. Th- there is podcasts out there which say that they're getting millions of, of listens. How do they know? I don't know. I don't there has know. to be there... some sort of business management tool there. There's, here we go, iTunes podcast charts. I wonder where we are on here. Should we have a say? Yeah. <laughs> See, there, there is loads. Um, iTunes. How much is worth, right? Actually, finding the big, big podcasts out there and contacting them and saying, how do you do it? I think a lot uh, are with other people. What do you mean? Well, with like, you know, like networks and stuff like that that, that can kind of uh, can help them out a little bit, I think. But I, I just wish that there was some way that we could we could find out because you, it, it, it's, it's so difficult <laughs> to find... To find anything on on, on on how to get it. I mean, we've been doing this like a year now, and we, and we literally have no idea how many people listen to us. Not in the slightest, because it isn't like anything that we've done before where where it does kind of take forever to uh, to find anything. We've signed up to a load of different things, but it seems like you have to input, like, you know, trackers and stuff, and or it seems like a big kerfuffle. So if someone could do it for us happily, please get in contact with us, because we, we literally have no idea at all. Um, another thing, after this, I'll be picking up my oh, new bike. Oh, yeah, this is big, yeah. Yeah, big yeah, news. yeah. Big news. So, I think we can mention it, really. It's no yeah, secret. of course we can. Go but, on. But uh, I'll be cycling from Manchester to Wales in August, which is 125 miles altogether. And it's all for Wish Upon a Star, um, a charity in the north who help children with 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 sort of wishes that they've got sick children, and I must say a massive hello and a thank you to the Edinburgh Cycle Company, uh, because what they've done is very very generously offered to support us in a way that they've practically given me a bike. Yeah, and it's not just a cheap old bike. It's a brilliant bike, this. In fact, Fraser is now on their website. Type in on there. All right, here we go. Giant. Giant. Defy. D-E-F-Y. Yeah. I think he's spelled like that. One. Uh, Let's just see. Hang on. Here we go. Now, look for the Defy one. One. Here we go. Oh. Oh, What have you done there? That's never good, is it? Is it spelled like that? No, it isn't spelled like that. I'm stuck. Come out. I'm a little bit stuck. There you go. You put gaint. Oh, that'll be why then. I put gaint, didn't I? Um, yeah, so Gareth's got a new bike, which he's picking up later, uh, which is very exciting, I have to say. And uh, the publicity video for it, telling you how to sponsor and stuff, will be available shortly. Uh, so we'll be able to tweet that. Wow, that's a nice bike, isn't it? Now, this bike that you're seeing, okay? Um, a mate of mine, Bobby Crystal, hello, um, who does lots of cycling, says that basically the only thing this bike wouldn't be be right for is if I was to enter the Tour de France. Now, I'm not planning on yet. I am. I'm in it already, actually. But he says that. Just for, got my confirmation for, email. For even a middle-of-the-road professional cyclist, that would do them justice. Pretty good. Pretty nice, so lovely. Um, that will be my bike. It's rather expensive as well, I have it to say. Is, so huge, massive thank you to them for supporting us uh, and supporting uh, the uh, the bike ride, which I'm super excited to to make the uh, uh, to make the video for. Actually, I've got some really nice ideas for it. It will be probably our first ever time where all the media has been controlled and run by us. Yeah, your 
on the filming side, I'm on the radio side, Michael's sorting out all the transport, all the other finer details, my mate Bobby is sorting out all the directions and stuff, where we go in, and all in all, this is a thing which is 100% us, yeah, but it's exciting. Um, obviously having um, help from radio stations that we are involved with, with Tameside Radio, and also Silk as well, Yeah, they're all helping us out, and we want to... Uh, raise a thousand pound but really at the gig the other oh, night oh yeah that's true yeah yeah we i had this little whip around because we had a little i box. thought that it is great having all these digital websites which people can go on that's brilliant but sometimes it is a lot easier and better if you just have literally a collection box there and i reckon well, we'll have I, made... I was talking to Michael about this because he was going round with it and people were putting like two pound coins in, pound coins in. Excellent. And it weighs quite a hefty amount. So, so that's good. You know, so we've already raised quite a bit. And of course you can sponsor Gareth. We'll be giving all the uh, all the details on that uh, about the Just Giving well, page and stuff a- like that. Actually, I think it's up yeah. there now. You're going to give it now. Go on. What is it? Just Giving. Have a look. Justgiving.com forward slash Wales to Manchester. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Manchester to Wales. Manchester to Wales. Here we go. No, I spelt it wrong. Manchester. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I can't. Ma- oh, Manchester. Oh, I can't. I can't spell. Manchester. Manchester. To Wales. To Wales. There we go. I've got it. There we go. Uh, yeah, so go to that, justgiving.com forward slash Manchester to Wales, and you'll be uh, taken to Gareth's donation page where you can uh, where you can donate to Gareth's bike ride and give some money to a brilliant charity that do some great work. Photographs do need changing on that, don't they, Fraser? Certainly do, yeah. Wow, goodness me. Well, we'll um, take some when we, when we have your bike and stuff. I have wrote all the... Gubbins about it now. Nice. Um, and if you'd like to follow us on Twitter, whether it's me, Fraser, or whoever, then it is all up there. Yeah, so um, go and have a look and give uh, and support the charity and such. Uh, but I think that's it for this week's Cultural Cast. We've done about 32 minutes. Um, can I just say quickly? No. One really weird um, experience happened to me this morning where... Go now, on. I'm up really early. He's and I'm up out really of the early. house by about quarter past six. Yeah. And our regular milkman now drives a proper truck. No way. And I'm thinking that surely with pe- uh, petrol prices and stuff, by the time you've, you know, drove around, all of the profit's gone. But anyway, so I was outside loading up my car and he drives up and takes some milk to next door. In the meantime, another dairy oh, no. pulled up behind him. Oh, no. But he was clearly waiting and trying to hide behind my car so that the other bloke didn't see him. Oh, it's kicking off, isn't and it? And as soon as he photo. went, he went, oh, he's gone. Oh, my goodness. It was like some... It's really, really man. weird dairy showdown. Oh, my God. And that was that. And wow. I thought that... Is there like... Yeah, I think there's a dairy underground, some, isn't there? Some sort of turf war Yeah, going it's like on ice cream men. In our Have you seen that video of that um, the ice cream man that is on the other guy's plot and he smashes his window? Have you seen that crazy video of that online? Anyway, that's it for this week's Cultural Cast. Like I said, if you do uh, subscribe to us on iTunes and listen to us regularly on iTunes, uh, post us on our Facebook page so that we know that you are there and we are, um, you know, we know that you are listening. Uh, but uh, subscribe to us on iTunes if you haven't already. Subscribe to us on YouTube as well. Uh, and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and all the other social medias. Um, and hopefully we'll be back next week when we'll have a full team and we'll be doing something exciting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.